What is up, bros and brats? I am Ming Slasher, and welcome to another episode of Storytime. So, in the last video, I asked you guys what you wanted to see next in Infinite Warfare Tips and Tricks video, or whether you wanted to see something like Storytime. And by the masses, you guys voted for Storytime. So, here it is. This is probably one of the best stories I have for you guys. It's it's hilarious, and what it revolves around is my high school friends and trips we've been on and all of that stuff, and this is a bunch of ridiculous lists, but I do want to kind of have a moral to this story, and it's not a moral that's like live your life better or any crap like that. It really has nothing to do with that. It's all it really is is know what makes you happy and do whatever that is. So what I mean by that is when I first started dating Melissa, who is my current girlfriend, um, I stopped hanging out with a lot of my high school friends just because I didn't have time with a mix between school, YouTube, my job, all of that stuff. I just didn't have time for my friends. And becoming full-time on YouTube has given me a lot of time to actually spend more time with my high school friends. But one of the main things that I've done with my high school friends in the past year or so was every year we went away on a trip. Generally, we went to Cuba because I live in Canada. You can travel to Cuba and it's super, super cheap because people from the States can't go there. So we've gone on these trips for a couple years now and I have some pretty ridiculous stories from those trips and that is where this is going to come into play so when I say high school friends I don't necessarily mean high school these have been my friends since I was like eight between five and eight anywhere from that range I've been friends with these guys forever and um, now I pretty much hang out with them weekly we hang out all the time three of them live in the same house together so it's very easy for us all to hang out uh, we have a great time and I've actually considered kind of doing videos with them with like we do drinking games to a lot of different Nintendo games from when we were kids so maybe that will be a thing one day. Let me know if you'd be interested in that down in the comment section. This is, as we like to call it, the Cuban jail story. And there's really two parts to it, because it spans over two trips to Cuba. So I believe 2014 was the first year we went to Cuba. Maybe might have been 15 and then... Yeah, I think it was we went in 2015 and then 2016. So the first year we went to Cuba was 2015. So in 2015, we go there. Melissa actually came with us that year. Melissa's my girlfriend, like I said earlier. Um, and she decided to come with us that year. Now, both of the trips we went on, um, the flight left later in the day, like afternoon. So we got to the resort late at night. And if you've never been to an all-inclusive resort before, all your food and all your drinks are included. So pretty much all you can drink alcohol and... If you've never been on one of these trips before, that's really unbelievable. Especially in Canada, I, if you're from the States and you've gone out to a bar before, you'll know you go out and buy a beer, and that beer in the States is like 2 to $3. In Canada, it's like 5 to $10. I'm, I'm not kidding you. The cheapest beer you can get... The, we have one bar in the city I live in where you can get 250 beers, and that bar is always so busy, but it's disgusting. It's the biggest dive in the world that has really cheap beers. When you go away on vacation, all of a sudden, all these drinks that normally you pay 5 to $10 for in Canada are absolutely free. So a couple of my friends on this trip had never had that experience before. So one of my friends, we'll call him Jay. Jay was had never been on one of these trips before. So we get there and immediately, before we even get into our rooms, we are slamming back drinks. I believe that night we drank... Um, Blue Lagoons, which was like the, the drink for the trip. Like, we drank that the whole time we were there. And I think it was pina coladas and strawberry daiquiris that night. They're free. You, you don't have to pay anything extra for them. So, we were slamming these backs before we even get to our room. And by the time we just got to our room, I personally was already a little bit tipsy. Um, so, we get back. We're hanging out at the bar. I would say maybe two hours goes by and we are loaded. Like, just absolutely tanked. And, uh, but we keep on drinking and all of a sudden Jay comes over to me, wraps his arms around my legs, throws up all over my feet. I'm wearing sandals. I can feel the puke all over my feet. It was not a comfortable feeling whatsoever. The only way like I can, like the one thing I can compare it to is if you took a giant bowl of like alpha Getty or noodles and just started squishing your feet around in it. It was disgusting. Um, but I stood there, let him puke on my feet. The reason why I didn't move, there was a thinking behind this. And the thinking was, is that if I move and trip, I'm fully in this puke. If I just let him puke on my feet, I can go rinse my feet off in the pool and let the bartender worry about the puke. So Jay pukes all over my feet and, uh... The bartender was a little bit worried about it, doesn't speak great English. So Jay sits up, sits on a chair and goes, 
I'm fine. I'm just gonna spit. So he starts to fall asleep on the chair. We're sitting in these chairs, pounding back a few more drinks. And all of a sudden, Jay gets up and we watch him stand up and start running towards the all you can eat buffet. Not like a hard run. Like, you know, like when you you see those video games and they're just doing like the light jog, that kind of thing towards the buffet. Now, the thing is is the buffet is closed at this time of night. Like completely locked up. You can't get in there. No food. There's no point in going in that direction. So we're like, what is he doing? That's not where our rooms are. And all of a sudden, he gets to the door. As he gets to the door, he sticks out his arm and stiff arms the door to the buffet. Now, not only does he just stiff arm the door to the buffet, he breaks the door to the buffet, like smashes it open. And as he does it, passes out into the buffet, like falls asleep all in one motion as he stiff arms through this door. Not kidding. So uh, we didn't really see this happen, that part. We just saw him running towards the buffet, thought he was going back to the room. So someone came and got us and said, hey, your friend's passed out in the buffet. We're like, what do, you, what do you mean passed out in the buffet? She's like, he is passed out in the buffet. So we walk over to the buffet and um, we try to get him up. We shake him. There's no getting him up. So we try shaking him again. There's still no getting him up. We're like, what? what is going on? So that, at that point, the nurse on the resort comes over. She does not speak great English. Um, so we end up waking up Jay and he's like kind of half asleep, half awake. If you've had drunk friends, you know exactly this feeling. We're shaking him. He's he's like, nah, I'm just going to sleep here for the night. And we're like, we're, you're not sleeping here. He's like, no, I'm going to stay here. And then like falls back asleep. And we're like, all right, what are we going to do? So my other friend who was his roommate for the trip goes, Jay, you know, um, what, what, what we're going to do here is either you're going to go back to the room or you're going to Cuban jail. Now, the only thing we know in Canada about Cuban jail is that it's not really Cuban. It's, it's Guantanamo Bay, you know, like that thing that you, you've seen in the movies, you've heard people talk about. That's what we picture as Cuban jail. So it's not really a place you want to go. So our other friend, his roommate says, Jay, you know what? You either get up or you go to Cuban jail. And he looks up, looks at him and goes, I'll go to Cuban jail. He's like, all right, well, he, he called my bluff. I don't know where to go from here. So... From that point forward, that was an ongoing joke throughout the trip. But eventually, what we ended up doing was the nurse had a little golf cart. We ended up picking up Jay, loading him into the golf cart, and driving him back to the room, carrying him inside. He threw up several more times in the room, but he was perfectly fine. Woke up the next day and could not do anything. The next day, he wakes up. We all go down to the beach first thing in the morning. He gets to the, uh, to the ocean, goes on all fours in the ocean throws up in the ocean, a wave comes, knocks him right in the face. But really, that was the, the only aspect of the first trip that the Cuban jail actually became a part of. Now, come trip two. Trip two, the exact same thing happens. We get there late at night, we're pounded back drinks. Again, you're not used to drinking this much. The thing with resort number two is that all of the drinks were about 10 times stronger. Like, I'm not kidding. Like, these drinks at the second resort were so much stronger, it wasn't even funny. So, we get there, we're pounding back drinks. Um, we decide that at this resort, there's like a pier you can go and dive off of. We're like, this is going to be great. We'll go there at night. We'll dive off of the pier and uh, swim back into the beach. Now, um, same person. Jay gets out on the pier and um, stands up on the edge of the rail of the pier and just passes out over the edge of the pier. I am not kidding, just like ass over tea kettle falls into the water. I'm like, for fuck's sakes. And then waiting for him to get up, he doesn't get up. I'm like, you f he better not freaking pass out in, in the water. Now, there were these little waves. And when I mean little waves, I mean about this high, like little waves. And these waves, he was drunk enough that these waves were knocking him over. So... Um, time goes by and we're like, okay, he needs help getting out of the water. So I get in the water, another friend gets in the water. He doesn't want our help getting out of the water. So we, we eventually do get him out of the water and up onto the beach. Well, of course he gets on the beach and like in the buffet, passes out on the beach. We're like, all right, well, well we can't have him sleep on the beach because, um, you just don't do that to your friend, right? So... What we end up doing is trying to carry him. As we try to carry him, he starts flopping around. And if you've never had to carry someone who's passed out, it's heavy as fuck. Like, really, really goddamn heavy. So, he struggles enough where we can't get him. So, 
beach security ends up coming along the beach, and this is where things got really serious. So beach security comes up to him and goes, what's he doing? We're like, oh, he's just really drunk. And we're like, uh, the beach security says, well, you need to get him to his room. And then we tried again. We tried to carry him into his room. He struggles again. This time we managed to get him onto one of the beach chairs. So he's sitting on the beach chair, and as he's sitting on the beach chair, um, he falls asleep again, wakes up a little bit, falls back to sleep. So the security guards on the beach says, if, if you can't get him to his room in 20 minutes, I don't remember what the actual frame, rem just as a reminder, I'm pretty drunk at this point too, but clearly much more sober than he was. Um, he says, if you don't get him to his room in 20 minutes, he, he's going to jail. And this time it wasn't us saying that. Like the first time his roommate was joking around being like, if you, if, if you don't go to your room, you're going to Cuban jail. And he's like, I'll, I'll take Cuban jail. But Jay, the same stubborn asshole that he was the first trip, looked up at the security guard and goes, I'll go to jail. This isn't our friend. This is the security guard. But once again, the security guard looks at him and goes, well, I don't know what to do. Like, the security guard was bluffing too, just like our friend did. And of course, didn't he did not go to Cuban jail. Now, what we ended up having to do is I just got pissed off at him enough where if you get really pissed off, you get a lot of adrenaline. So I just, 220 pound guy, lift up, throw him over my shoulder. A couple of my friends help grab his leg so he doesn't kick me. And we carry him back to his room. We get him to his bed, flop him down on his bed. He's out like that. Just completely out once again. But... We did not go have to go to Cuban jail. He was he he was very drunk, and I think the next day he stayed in his room most of that day. I think, um, but those trips are absolute. I have a lot more stories from those trips, and if you if you want more stories of like this, I have. Like I was saying earlier, I love spending time with my high school friends. Absolutely love it. And the thing with it is I get all of these great stories because generally we're doing something fun like this, like going to Cuba, drinking, having a great time. And if you want to hear more stories like this, hit that like button. My friend didn't have to go to Cuban jail. It was one hell of a situation, but he did not have to go to Cuban jail. Um, but I thought you guys may enjoy that story. If you want to hear more like this one, hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, like what you see, hit that subscribe button. I upload new Call of Duty videos every single day of the week. But thank you guys so much for watching. You can check out my Twitch, Twitter, and Let's Play channel down in the description. Thanks for watching, and until next time, peace out. Maybe you should take it slow.